The ASIC Gel Resolution 8 is one of the most popular shoes on the Pro Tour and among amateurs, but is the clay version as good as the original? Let's find out. Hey everybody, it's Zach. If you're new to the channel, every week I'm testing out new tennis shoes both on court and in the workshop from the perspective of a former tennis pro and current foot doctor. So if you want to stay up to date on the latest tennis tech, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. That way you don't miss a thing. Now the ASICS Gel Resolution 8 Clay is billed as a race car with monster truck treads. So let's put it through the play test, serve, suicide, and durability test to see if this shoe has what it takes to be considered a standout clay court shoe. The uppers of the Gel Resolution 8 Clay are just about identical to the original version as you can see here. They've got the pull tabs here for even lace tension. Now even though the uppers are the same on the clay and the hard court version, it really is built well for clay. You got that polyurethane all throughout the upper, which is going to move through the court really well, especially on clay. And it's going to resist that wet clay from seeping into the uppers, which can make the shoe feel really clunky. Of course, you got the Dyna Bar, which gives great energy return when compressed, moving laterally side to side. Now, ASIC's Trustic system, which this shoe has, is really great. Number one, it's really good for lateral stability. Number two, it saves weight, and it allows for the midsole to be stuffed with more foam because the shoe doesn't need an internal shank. It's on the outside of the shoe. Now, the ankle collar and heel counter are still pretty low, so if you do have a high arch foot, make sure you wear either double socks, thick socks, or you do this cat's cradle technique in the back, or just use the back eyelet. All right, so like I was saying, people with a high arch or people whose heels just pop out of shoes sometimes with a low ankle collar, these are two shoelacing techniques that'll really work for you. Number one is this cat's cradle technique. Um, now, I call this cat's cradle, uh, you can call it the heel lock shoelacing technique or the box lock technique. Uh, I just call it cat's cradle. Now, here's where we normally tie our shoelaces. The only thing this is really easy, you just pop this lace down same side and pull it across and you do the same thing on this side pop it across now the key is under the loop and under this loop now you'll notice that the shoe will actually tighten just by pulling the laces and then also by cinching them down the entire upper kind of cinches around the ankle collar and that really helps hold your heel in now the other technique that you can use, which might get a little bit tighter, but it also might cause a little more pain, is just to come back and use the very back eyelet. Now when you tighten this down, as you'll see, this side really kind of comes in toward the top of your foot, and that actually might cause a little bit of a pressure point. So I do like the cat's cradle technique a little better, but you can use both. Just remember when you use this technique, number one, you're gonna get a little more fraying at the shoelaces, so you might wear through shoelaces quicker. And number two, you might need longer shoelaces because there's not going to be as much lace if you like to double knot your shoes. That is a beautiful thing. Of course, the similarities stop with the outsole. As you can see on the Gel Resolution 8 Clay here, you got this thick, chunky, deep herringbone with one big midfoot stamp and air channel to allow sliding. And these treads did grip well-maintained and even bare clay just really, really well. Now, one thing about this shoe having clay treads plus the Dyna wall is when you stretch out really far, the shoe really digs in and that Dyna wall kind of kicks in and helps push you back toward the other side of the court. And this combination of really responsive midsole and deep chunky herringbone is just a huge plus for aggressive clay court movers and sliders. And speaking of sliding, remember when evaluating a shoe for sliding, the shoe is not going to improve your sliding technique all that much. That has to be done with practice. Now a shoe with a terrible clay tread is gonna make sliding much more treacherous for sure because you're gonna be slipping all over the place. The more important factor when it comes to shoes is what happens when your slide comes to a stop. You know, how does the shoe respond to the next push off? And I really think these shoes do an A plus job of that. And I think if I was gonna describe these shoes in one word, it would be stability. I never felt out of control on these shoes, even on bare spots on the clay court. And that's even with this low ankle collar and heel counter. Now, like the original Gel Resolution 8, these shoes did break in immediately. And that is with this all polyurethane upper, it felt really secure, but definitely not stiff, which is a really hard needle to thread. 
The Gel Resolution 8s are a generous medium. I have a 2E width foot and I had no problems with their standard size for me. Length looks true. Now, if you have an excessively wide foot, they do make this shoe in a wide version. So if that's available in your area, get that. If not, maybe try to go up a half size. Now, obviously the suicide test was a little slower on clay than it would have been on a hard court. However, even on the barren spots on the clay, I really only had one misstep during the test in these shoes. And I think for that, I think these did pretty well. I ended up with a respectable 26 centimeters on the serve test with the gel resolution 8 clay. Now I really think I would do a lot better on the serve test in these shoes if the ankle collar was just a little more secure and the heel counter was just a little more secure. If you watch the teardown video of these shoes, you'll see you've got the really stuffed midsole foam, the trustic system, and the dyna wall, which really can store potential energy and turn into kinetic energy really well. But if there's that micro motion of your heel coming up and then the shoe coming up, you're gonna lose some centimeters on the serve test. The durability test on the outsole was something I was really looking forward to just because the original version of these did so well in the durability test on their outsole and uppers. So I was really looking forward to seeing does the clay version have a softer rubber or does it do just as well? And just as I suspected during the durability test using the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, you had about four millimeters of damage on these treads which was in stark contrast to the original Gel Resolution 8, which was barely a millimeter of damage. So just an enormous difference between the softness of the clay version and the originals. All right, so durability test part two. I think one of the best ways to test out the rubber on these shoes is to play with them on a hard court and see how they do. Now, if you saw my original ASICS Gel Resolution 8 review, you'll remember I said that the shoes were actually kind of quiet. These are the opposite. Clay treads are always gonna make a ton of noise on a hard court, at least a good clay court shoe will, because all those little fins of herringbone are gripping the hard court and then skidding. Now that sound means two things. Number one, you better not try to slide on a hard court in these shoes. So if you're a hard court slider, don't use them on hard court. Number two, that sound means that the rubber is wearing down. So I would say if you're gonna play on both surfaces a lot and you want the gel resolution eight, maybe you pick up a clay pair and a hard court pair, or if you do mainly play on a hard court, you only have to play on clay a little bit, then maybe just go with the original. But if you are gonna play on clay a lot, you just need these for a couple times on hard court here or there, just know the tread's gonna wear down a little bit, but they will grip incredibly well and they have the same stability and good feeling as the original A6 gel resolution eight. All right, so pre-workout, my shoes were at 71 degrees. They were actually sitting in my car overnight, so they were a little cooler. Let's see what these do, even with the hard court on the clay treads. 96. So as you can see, the clay court treads burning up on the hard court do kind of increase the heat that's gonna be produced by these shoes. I mean, that's 25 degrees. That's quite a bit. So on a hard court, these definitely are gonna heat up a lot. Now, all in all, the A6 Gel Resolution 8 clay is a formidable clay court shoe, especially if you don't have a high arch. I also think it's probably worth it to do a head-to-head -head video of the Gel Resolution 8 clay and the A6 Court FF2 in a future video. But for right now, I will just say, if you are gonna play on clay courts, these shoes definitely have to be on your radar. And so until the next shoe, I hope you all have a great day, great night, wherever you're tuning in from. I'll see you next time.